Hi everyone, we're back live here at 10X Arndal at the Facebook Live studio. I'm Nina and this is... Martin. And today we have some other awesome guests with us. These are some of the speakers. Geosnap! Shanduras! <laughs> and here they are. They don't even need me anymore. So these are our first guests. This is Sean Shanduras. Uh, Milko Jokolava. Yeah, Milko Jokolava. <laughs> it's my favorite Norwegian word. <laughs> and this is Guy Uve, Geosnap. Hey! And, I mean, we could call you a social media celebrity, right? We prefer yeah. social media presidents. Okay, yeah. so, all right. So presidents of social president. media. I'm the VP. Yeah, yeah you're more <laughs> like the president, or the president of Snapchat. Or he's, VP he's, of Snapchat. He's yeah. European and president. I'm North American president. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Don't I'll get us confused. That. It's okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll try to make sure to keep it straight yeah. now. Yeah. All right, well, so, presidents, you are both here for TEDx Arndal. True. Yeah, and you just had a talk, right? Yeah, did I do good? You did amazing. Like out of 10. Uh, 15 at least. It was awesome. It good. was great. You're talking about social media, Snapchat. Social media. If there's one thing you need to know <laughs> about social media, you could have learned it in my talk. No, I talked about social media, how it's important yep. uh, both to create and consume when you're creating social media. It pushes you to do more fun things, to uh, test your limits, to share your talents. And then when you're consuming social media, it pushes you to like connect with those that you like your lo long lost friends or your family yeah. and just, yeah, both creating and consuming is good. Because you both are kind of professionals at yeah. having fun. Yes, we're professional fun. fun havers. I think that was the name of my talk. It was. Is was it? I mean, I don't know, but you said <laughs> you are was. a professional fun I haver. I am. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that's kind of what I. Melko chocolate. Melko chocolate. <laughs> so, I mean, are we ready for some more serious questions? No, here? not serious, but uh, we need to uh, be clear on your. Uh, job is to you live of social media right both Pro of you yeah professional fun haver and how yeah. does that work um he's a pro well you professional uh, fun haver. start getting a lot of views but um, you can say it's more uh, brands contact you uh, you do a different thing like today I'm also doing like consulting mm. strategies uh, speaking it can be a lot of things and did you have this sort of promotion plan ready from the get-go or did just this just play out this you're being you right it just play, played out mm. uh, my first focus was just to make people happy mm. and that's what you do too honestly at the very beginning it was a business plan for me I was like okay. yeah I'll be honest I thought this was really cool so I had built a business on Facebook and it worked and so I was like what's the next new thing that's bigger than Facebook and I saw snapchat and I was like that could be an incredible business. I'll go around and have fun, and then I can work with brands to tell their message while I'm having fun. So I kind of planned that from the beginning, but <laughs> I think that's okay, because I still like, I love to inspire people yeah. and I love to have fun, but I also enjoy working with brands and to be able, you have to be creative. You don't just want to throw a commercial and you don't have fun and then commercial and then have fun. Mm -hmm. You got to have a fun commercial that lasts the whole time. So you yeah. have to be creative when you work with brands. And I really enjoy that. I. Uh, I, I look like an irresponsible young boy, but I actually enjoy the business <laughs> side as well. So I like to have fun and do the business. Mm. Melko chocolate. Melko chocolate. Yeah. I will, of course, follow both of you uh, for a while. And I Good. never get the feeling that you're doing something for a brand. And that's qu qu kind of what you're saying, right? Yeah, you're, yeah. 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 Uh, when I work with a brand, I like to make it very obvious that I'm working with them. Like it's, uh, we have FTC guidelines. We say sponsored, yeah. or we say that yeah. we've partnered with them. But then once we do it, you, if you make the brand the hero, then people are happy you're working mm. with them. Like it feels like, oh, I'm glad they're doing this because it's more fun. Yeah. So. Yeah. No. Also, the way you work with it, it's like you can't say no to deals if yeah. they want a specific way. I always told uh, people contact me like, let's do it my way, the creative way, and then I know that I can uh, give my audience the yeah yeah the greatest content. Mm. And if they listen to you and you meet in the middle, awesome. That's yeah. great. Well, but so when did you guys start out? How many years has it been? Because I mean, both Snapchat is not old. Yeah, like two years, 2.5 yeah. years. We were some of the first people to make really interesting Snapchat art and Snapchat stories. Yeah. It's funny, at the very beginning I found him on Instagram. I was like, this guy's amazing. So I found him on Facebook and we became friends and uh, 
Yeah. This is the first time we've yeah, met. First we've met. Time that's amazing. Because I mean, it feels yeah. like you've both like you've known each other for years, right? Yeah. That's the power. BFFs. Yeah, but that's the power of social media. You can connect with people and you can really get to know them. Yeah. Uh, like really personally, but you can be across the world. Like, yeah. You know follow for follow. Follow for yeah. Okay, yeah, I'll follow you. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, don't uh, everyone who's watching the Facebook Live, like the like the Facebook page. Is that can they do that? Yeah. Like it? Yeah. Give it a like. There we like go. It. And uh, leave it a comment and I'll read the comments and then I'll respond to the comments. Oh, so leave that. comments We're and like. There we go. Already. Social media, high fives. <laughs> okay. But you're also doing a workshop later at three. We are? Yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, we are doing a workshop at three o'clock. So if for some reason you happen to live in Arendal and you like milk or chocolate, come to the workshop at three o'clock. We will be there. We will give high fives. Are you yeah. gonna give yeah. milk chocolate too? Yes. Okay. Oh, there's a surprise. There's Ooh, a surprise. There's we a have surprise? a surprise. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to ruin it. But there's a surprise. No. Surprise. There's a surprise. Well, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. What else have you been doing in Arndal? Other than, I mean, speak for a TED talk. I yeah, think. that was really cool. <laughs> that was definitely like bucket list. We went on a boat ride yesterday. Yeah? Yeah, boat ride. Fast boat oh, ride. he had a surprise for me. He took me to the Christian Sun Zoo. Yeah, in yeah? Christian Sun. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we got to feed giraffes That's and awesome. meerkats and I had monkeys. To get, I had to get him up at 6 p.m. I went up to uh, the <laughs> office. 6 p.m. or a.m.? No, sorry, a.m. Okay. Yeah. 6 p.m. Oh, okay. uh, well, yeah. that's not sorry. that rough. No, but this is a good story. Okay, Listen. I'm listening. Then I, then I walked up to the office where he was sleeping. I knocked on the door and opened up and uh, saw him la laying there. I just like, hmm, Shanduras, time to wake up. <laughs> huh? And I stretch out and he's not moving at all. What is this? His computer is on, and... Ah! <laughs> I scared him. I set it up, I put my backpack in the blankets. It was and so he, funny. Uh, he has the best uh, <laughs> YouTube account ever, the best day ever. And yeah. Well, is, is this going to be on your YouTube so yeah. people can look? I yeah. just barely posted it today on my YouTube, The Scare. So it's what's your good. YouTube account? Shonduras, everything Chandra, is Shonduras. So somebody, okay. somebody leave in the comments, write Shonduras yeah. so everyone knows how to find it. It's S-H-O-N-D-U-R-S. Someone leave a comment. I'm mm. counting on you guys. <laughs> leave a comment. And then Geosnap, right? Yes. Yeah. How do you uh, uh, write that out? In case leave a comment with his name, Geosnap. Do it. <laughs> So you get everything there if you want yeah. to follow these ones. I highly Milk recommend it. Milk chocolate. And you also like, you draw, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, and where did that come from? Like why drawing on your Snapchat? And Makes it more fun. Yeah. Yeah. He's the king of it. He's way good at drawing. I think. Huh, but thanks. did you draw drawing before questions. that? Have you I have a background as a, uh, as a graphic illustrator. Oh, okay. And, uh, cool. Stuff like that. Uh, then I looked into Snapchat and I uh, had like 10 friends in it. Uh, so for me it was like just all about taking sneak pictures of people and uh, started to draw on them too. But how are the drawings even possible? Because I've watched them and yeah. it's art. Yeah. How do you yeah, do yeah, it nice. on a phone? Uh, at the beginning it was uh, very simple drawings. Like, uh, But uh, if you have a background or if you uh, think creati creatively, uh, you can build it up by layers. Like you have to put like a darker red color if you're gonna make a tomato, and then you put a lighter color on top, <laughs> lighter, 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 and you build a lot of wow. layers. So it's really a Snapchat technique. Yeah, yeah it is actually. Mastered. Okay. So uh, because if you sit and uh, draw in Snapchat, uh, the tools aren't that good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> drawing. It's very basic. You have to be creative. Yeah. Well, that's the fun part. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Maybe one day we'll have like a Snapchat gallery. Yeah, maybe. We'll maybe see. Yeah. That's a great idea. I know, yeah. right? Because I mean, I truly think it is art. Some yeah. of the things you, you both are making is just like... Milk wow, chocolate. Milk chocolate. That's my I favorite think. Norwegian candy. Guess what, my, <laughs> guess what my least favorite Norwegian food is. <laughs> is that you can. Uh, nope. Okay, uh, but no, that was gross. That was can gross. you say it in Norwegian? <laughs> yeah, uh, I can. Okay. Uh, what's that cheese? Uh, uh, yeah, but uh, if there are any brands out there with like the brown cheese, he really loves it. <laughs> <laughs> no. Send it home to him, packages no. like... Yeah, yeah, no. No. What is it? It is pultost. Pultost. Pultost? Was that yeah. worse than brown cheese? I don't know because I threw up with the brown cheese. <laughs> I actually threw up. I didn't try it in Norway. My friends from Norway sent me some brown cheese and I ate it on my YouTube video and I threw up. It was so bad. It's so but good. No. No. Oh, yeah. Milk or chocolate. You just have to eat That's a little bit more. Like. Then no. it, you, no, okay. <laughs> well, so no, uh, no brunos on your workshop then. Probably what? Not. No Bruno's no, on your workshop. No, no. no. That'd be a cool idea. 
What? I'm confused. Milk or chocolate? <laughs> brown cheese? Oh, brown cheese. No, we don't want brown workshop? cheese. No, nope. But, uh, oh, yeah. Make we sure. have a surprise at our workshop. Did I mention a surprise? Are you guys coming to our workshop? Did I mention <laughs> three got, three got to be a surprise there. If you live in Arendal. Not oh, only for all people yeah, of Christian Sam, Grimstad, or the cities around. If you uh, look just at the clock. Just drive a little fast. Jump in the car. There. Not too fast. It's mostly just for no, our no, Be safe. Be safe. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, do you have any more pressing pressing questions for these two amazing guys? A lot, but I think they need to proceed with their plans. I think so. Yeah, we, we need to keep to you in yeah. the workshop. Yeah, yeah. we have a surprise in our workshop. No! Yeah. 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 We have a surprise yeah. for our I workshop. I can't okay. wait for this workshop. Well, right, thank perfect. you so much for coming here. Yeah, yes. thank you. Yeah, it's been awesome. Well, Milk and chocolate. We'll be back soon with no milk chocolate, but we'll be back in like less than a minute, so stay tuned. Bye. Bye. Yep. Bye. Hi guys, we're back live here at Telex Arnold. Facebook Live, obviously, because you're on Facebook watching this. This is me, Nina, and this is Martin. And right now, we have another awesome guest with us, or one of the speakers. His name is uh, James Beecham. He is a physicist, right? That is correct, yes. And you are originally from the U.S., obviously. Correct. Where do you live now? I live in Geneva, Switzerland. Geneva, Switzerland. Yes. And before we come to why you live there, why physics? Why physics? That's kind of like asking, you know, why breathe air? Why, <laughs> why bother walking around? It's, it's the logical extension of curiosity. It's like yeah. the, the farthest you can possibly go. If you're a curious kid and you're asking questions, you know, you're like this irritating little kid bugging your mom and dad about like, oh, why does, this, why does a car go? Why does, you know, why, why is the sky blue? Eventually you get to the fundamental questions and that leads you to physics. But why is particle physics an important field of research? Um, why is particle physics an important field of research? <laughs> Just uh, to break it down. <laughs> to break it down. Easy. Well, particle physics, what we do is we are answering those questions that I just mentioned, you know, kind of like childlike why, who, you know, how questions in a, a very controlled way. And particle physics is, it's not important in and of itself, it's important because it's, it's, the, end of, it's the end of all these questions. It's like when you end up asking, you know, take like a loaf of bread, you cut it in half, cut the half in half, how far can you go? That's really all we're asking. You get down to the far, as, as far as you can possibly go and you finally can come up with something that it seems like you can't cut. Mm. So we're kind of trying to list all the things that are uncuttable and the ways that they interact. And as a result, over decades of doing this, it got to the point where we have this really rich structure of the way everything came together. And it's, and it's really quite impressive. Mm. And at CERN, you have this, maybe you could explain this amazing uh, construction that's underground yes. and that's a big part of what you do, right? You right. work with uh, particles and uh, sending them around. Right, <laughs> so I, I work with the, the Large Hadron Collider, which yes. is this 27 kilometer circular tunnel and it's buried 100 meters on the ground and in that tunnel we take protons, which are some of this, you're made of protons right now, okay. um, and we take protons and we accelerate them almost to the speed of light and then we collide them. And in these collisions, we do this millions of times per second because we have the possibility of uncovering new particles that we've never discovered before. Is that kind of like the Big Bang? Is that like the it's actually quite similar to the Big Bang in the sense that we are trying to, when we go to such higher energies, we have such a huge 27 kilometer tunnel, mm -hmm. that means we can get up to high, high energies. And if you go to high, high energies, you're getting closer, farther and farther back toward the very beginning of the universe, which is right after the wow. Big Bang. Because if you imagine, we see all this stuff here, yeah. everything is kind of like low energy, everything's sort of like kind of simple, these guys are just hanging out. Yeah. Um, but if you take all the stuff around you and everything in the universe, if you pressurize it into one tiny little thing, that's going to be really hot and energetic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now that's what we're doing in the, at the LHC. You can think of the LHC as the Big Bang Machine. Mm. I love that. And what's your role there? Like, what do you... Uh, I'm, a, yeah. I'm a, an experimentalist on one of the big collider um, detectors called Atlas. And it's this six-story high tin can tipped on its side and filled with a bunch of complicated electronics, uh, 40 meters long. And I work on this to, uh, to help analyze the data that comes out of this. Because okay. you collide pr particles, a bunch of stuff hits your detector, you collect all this. It's like a 100 megapixel camera taking photos of more 40 million times a second. Mm. And that takes a lot of uh, data analysis. So uh, I and my colleagues are the ones who uh, come up with the ideas as to, okay, how can we sift through this 
gigantic data set, yeah. almost gobsmacking in this, in this level of mm. uh, complexity, mm. to try to find new stuff versus old stuff. It's like, you know, if we, yeah. we understand old yeah. physics that we typically, you know, the standard stuff that we, the, that we know and love very well, and how do we separate that from the new possible effects, mm -hmm. new, new discoveries. And could you explain to me something that I nearly understood when it was uh, spoke about a lot in the media mm -hmm. for uh, a year ago, too? The Higgs boson. The Higgs boson, yes. Higgs boson. So what do you know about the Higgs boson? <laughs> it's antimatter? No. Black? No. That's the Da Vinci book. Ah, uh, the Da Vinci. The <laughs> uh, so I've never read this book, uh, okay. but I'm glad that Dan Brown mentions CERN and gets yeah. the name out there. Yeah. Um, so the Higgs boson was a huge discovery in 2012 by my colleagues and I, um, and it was uh, a gigantic discovery for a couple of different reasons. One is that it was the last missing piece of something that we call the standard model of particle physics. And it is the standard model, capital S, capital M, look it up and study it. It's, it's one of the most uh, impressive things that humanity has ever come up with because you can start with some basic mathematical equations and you follow through with math that, you know, maybe it's college level math, but you can follow through with fairly simple stuff and it makes these crazy predictions about particle physics. Uh, like that you, it basically says if you go out and design an experiment, you should find blah particle with blah mass and people like scratch their head like, really? Why would reality, why would nature just follow what we yeah. write down on our math? But yeah. it totally is true. And it passes all these tests that we've thrown at it. And the, this, is, this, is, this was developed in the 20th century. But the last missing piece, the elusive piece of it, was this thing called the Higgs boson. And it had been missing for like 40 years. And so people were like, this is crazy. we got to find this thing. So we turned on the LHC. Um, we took data for a couple of years. And then finally the Higgs boson revealed itself as this tiny little bump. That's the one reason that it was important, because the last missing piece of this thing that really confirmed that the standard model is the correct description. So it was just picture. missing? Well, it was, but I mean, missing in terms of us, we had never discovered it. You haven't seen it? We had never seen it in the lab. Yeah, we'd never seen it in the lab. And the other reason it's very important, maybe I don't know how much time I have, I can go on for hours, but yeah. the, the, the yeah. other reason this, this Higgs boson is important is because it's a very weird particle compared to all the other ones that we know. Electrons, you're also made of electrons. Quarks are all around us. Uh, the Z boson we know quite well. Um, we know what neutrinos are. We know these things quite well. Um, and they all have very specific um, uh, jobs that they play in, in, uh, in particle physics, meaning that they, the ways that they interact are, are very kind of known, but they're all, all parts of a class, uh, classes of particles that we understand quite well. The Higgs boson is completely different from all of these things. It's, it's the particle manifestation of the only fundamental scalar field that we know of. And I know that's a, that sounds like a mouthful, <laughs> but it's very important because all of the other fields that we know of, sort of like you can kind of think of analogous to force fields, they're what we call vector fields. Yeah. And that's what we have, what everyone has known about for a very long time. That's all, that's all we do all of our studies with. The Higgs boson is very different. It's a scalar field and it's the particle that is the evidence of this field that gives all other particles mass. So this concept of mass itself would not make any sense if it wasn't for the Higgs boson. So kind of a big wow. deal would be an un understatement Extremely. for that. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, do we have time for one last question? Because it's yes. really yes. interesting. What do we understand this? What happens now? <laughs> that we understand really well. Okay. You dropped a pen yeah. and then the earth pulled it down and it was stopped by the, the table. Okay. We understand almost all the forces that are going on okay. in that interaction. Okay. However, if we were trying to describe a quantum mechanical version of what you just did, that we don't understand. Hmm. It's the notion of gravity and quantum mechanics playing together, they don't play well together right now. That's a big open question for science. Okay, right so uh, just a first grader question. What's that uh, thing that you said before, uh, the quanti? The qu quantum mechanics? Yeah, what is that? What is quantum mechanics? Oh my god, do we have two, uh, do we have two hours here? <laughs> I could start lecturing. Uh, one minute. One minute. <laughs> <laughs> the world can wait. Yeah, qu quantum mechanics is the, um, how can I describe quantum mechanics in 60 seconds? Quantum mechanics is the, 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 the way things interact at very, very small scales once you get down to the so small that there's this extra thing that becomes important called the, the Planck scale. The, the, it's, it's called H-bar. And it's really just a size, uh, a, a very, very small size scale or an energy scale or a time scale. These are all kind of equivalent things where the rules start to change with respect to the way things interact. Okay. So with you and I and us all around us, you know, this happened very clearly. It's like, yeah. we, have, well. we have one thing, there's some mass here, the Earth has a bunch of mass, and they got pulled together. At the quantum level, and, but you know, for instance, this pen can't go through the table, right? 
Never because, happened. You know, never happened, right. Okay, we still have forces and interactions that happen at the quantum level, but with quantum mechanics, because of the, it's, that sounds very weird, and, but trust me, the math is true. We've actually seen this. In fact, we, we wouldn't be able to have this and, and some of the, the effects that we have on our smartphones without quantum mechanics. There's actually a possibility at the quantum level that if I drop this, it would actually be measured on the other side of the, the table. Yeah. There's a non-zero probability that I could measure that pen at being the other side of the table, in the quanti if this were a quantum table world. Yeah. Uh, quantum TED TEDx Arundel. I think you did great. That was awesome. <laughs> I have another question. Yes. Uh, it's a little bit physics related, but not really. What do you do with your physics friends when you guys want to have fun? Oh my God. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see. So we we watch the Big Bang Theory. <laughs> oh, I love that. Oh, okay. Uh, I got, I got actually, that one. Actually, people ask me that sometimes, and, I, and I'm like, I've never seen that show. I'm sorry. What? No, I've never seen it. Oh I'm busy God. doing research. Oh, what sorry, do you want from sorry. me? I'm, doing, okay, I'm coding okay, all the time. Okay. No, no. The I'll answer is the answer is that we uh, we take advantage of the really good Swiss uh, beer, and yeah. the, the we go we go skiing, we uh, go swimming, we uh, watch the Big Bang Theory. No, I already said that. So oh. so uh, when you go skiing, it's not like you all of a sudden just like guys stop, look at that snow, look at that like da da da. -da. No, but sometimes going when you take a bunch of uh, physics nerds on, you know, colleagues on a ski trip, that's where some of the best ideas come out. <laughs> Not so much from the snow, but like you get out of your normal thing, right? Yeah. You get out of the get out of the lab, get out from behind your laptops, and you're like skiing, or you're like hiking, and you're like, oh wait, that's how I should quantize gravity. And then you run back to the lab. Yes, then yes. you run back. You yeah. d d abandon your skis <laughs> and just run downhill. So. But, um, now these days we just keep our laptops with us. <laughs> <laughs> Another question is. Uh, What's your, uh, like, if you could have a dream scenario happen when you do research, what would that be? Like, what's the one thing you hope that you're going to be able to figure out? Dream or? scenario. Uh, wow. Well, for me, there are so many open questions that we're pursuing at CERN. I mean, that's why it's such a, it's such a great uh, scientific curiosity, intellectual playground. There's so many different things we're searching for. You know, in my talk, I talk a little bit about this, this bump, this little kind of yeah. suggestive excess X, and we're like, oh, hold on, hold on. But you know, it's entirely possible it could have turned into a big discovery. In this case, it didn't. The data are the ones that do the talking. So we're not really, none of us are really that sad. We're kind of like, oh, okay. Because we're also working on like 10 different projects at the same time. Yeah. So we're also looking for dark matter particles. We're also looking for uh, supersymmetry particles. We're looking for uh, quantum black holes. You know, we're trying to look for all these possible things. For me, um, a lot of my research involves uh, studying the Higgs boson itself that you talked about because it's our newest and shiniest discovery and our shiniest toy. Mm. We want to break it and figure out what's wrong with it. Um, so we, we try to study it to death. Um, and see wh if there's some deviations from what we expect from, from this standard model Higgs boson. So mm -hmm. that's one of the things I'm really excited about in the, in the near term future to find deviation from what, from what we expect with the Higgs boson. Um, then also, I'd like to, you know, I'd love to see a new gravi graviton come out of nowhere, maybe a quantum black hole. <laughs> so that would be really cool. Wouldn't for we me. all? Wouldn't that would be really cool to me if we discovered mm -hmm. a quantum black hole. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, that's awesome. Uh, I, I mean, we could talk forever. I, this is so cool. Uh, do you have any, like, one last question if you, you, you have about 30 seconds if you want it? If you don't just talk particle physics, what's the biggest question in science right now? The biggest question in science right now, outside of particle physics. Um, Is there anything else outside of <laughs> physics? Well, there's, so, there's some very key open questions in pure math. Uh, so in undergrad, I did a double major in physics and math. And so part of me is also very interested in these kind of outstanding questions of, mm -hmm. of pure math, the set theory things, um, the, the omega conjecture, stuff like this. So those are interesting. But in a more practical sense, there are, there are open, uh, open questions with respect to genomics that I think are really fascinating right now. Mm -hmm. um, uh, some of the other talks that I've been seeing here have been really inspiring to yeah. me too. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm kind of one of these people where it's like I love my own field, um, but I also love like all the other fields too. And so if you ask me this question, it's probably the most recent thing that I saw. I'm like, oh, that's the most <laughs> important thing. Because this other person that's really inspiring to me, they're working on this thing, and that's the most important thing. Yeah. Tomorrow maybe it's, it'll be different. But. Yeah. Well, you did an amazing talk. It Thank was you. great. Uh, if anyone wants to follow what you do, can they, do you have a Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram, any of that? Uh, yes, I have a Twitter account. Uh, I don't use Facebook, um, but sorry, I guess this is a Facebook Live. <laughs> thing, but it's fine. But if you want to, if yeah, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on Twitter, uh, and also have a, a website. Um, oh, cool. and They're both the same thing: jbbeacham.com or jb, at, at jbbeacham on, on Twitter. Awesome. So, if any of you are interested in any of the stuff we just talked about, you should check that out. Uh, thank you so much for talking to us. No problem. We'll be back Thanks in less than a minute. So.
don't go anywhere. Stay there. Bye. <laughs> and we're back live at Cedric Sarndal. Uh, should we say our names again? I mean, we should. Maybe some new. I'm Nina. Still Martin. <laughs> and this new guest is another uh, Speaker. Talker speaker, yeah, mm -hmm. I can't even talk anymore. Uh, she's amazing. She's Norwegian, Christina Uderam. Uh You do zero waste, right? Yeah, that's yeah. true. <laughs> it's uh, so. I mean, it's pretty much the concept of not leaving any waste behind. Or yeah, well, it's kind of like a lot of people when they see my jar, uh, they say, "How do you do that?" But actually, it's uh, it's. We have like five rules within the zero waste. Uh, well, people apply it different ways. Yeah. That's what I like with the movement because it's no blueprint. It's yeah. like, you know, because everyone has their own way Do of what you doing can. things. Yeah. But it's basically five rules that is like laid out. Laid out. It is mm -hmm. refuse what you do not need, mm -hmm. and reduce what you do need, and reuse, recycle, and rot. So it's kind of okay. like, uh, like so that. this is what's left when you're done like those oh, five then. steps. So yeah. tell us about this one. What is this? I mean, it's a jar, but yeah. what is it? It is a bit <laughs> awkward to talk about your garbage, so I was a bit <laughs> reluctant to bring this one. Because here, here you can say like, oh, she eats a lot of butter. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I love butter. Um, that is a problem. And I've become aware of that after I started yeah. collecting my garbage. Because suddenly I was like, oh my god, it's actually too much butter. So, oh, so now I've gone over to oil. I can buy that, at, you know. Mm -hmm. In, uh, but this cans. is your trash yeah. that you uh, like uh, produce, I guess, in I one year. It. Yeah, yes. generated in one year. One year? Yeah. This mm -hmm. is all? Isn't that crazy? I would say one day, maybe. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the average American uh, generates around two kilos every day. So two kilos every yeah. day. The thing is, you know, um, I think what many people don't think about when it comes to waste is, it's. Our society is built in a way so you don't really think about waste. It's just like something you get yeah. and then you throw it away because garbage bins is everywhere. Yeah. So, so, so that's. Uh, but you need to really take us through how that's possible. Yeah. Because to me, that's physically impossible. Yeah. yeah. You guys well, use final arms. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I didn't end up like that overnight. So mm -hmm. I think that's very important. Like, I have some uh, followers uh, of my blog that sometimes, you know changed overnight when I put out a new post they were like oh I'm gonna switch this and that and I'm I really respect that because I would not manage to do that myself yeah I I come from a, a generation farm so I kind of been challenged since I was a kid yeah. and you know you go a bit to the side and you go a bit back and then you I didn't expect me to become this person that you know, you know show her <laughs> waste off as it was a Rolex, but um, but it, I really enjoy the the lifestyle. And I think the most important thing is kind of refuse everything you take in your home. It's kind of like so. What will this thing mean to me? Yeah. Uh, where does it come from, and where would it you know end when I no longer need it? So every time I bring something in my flat, mm -hmm. um, you know. So my, when my friends come over, for example, <laughs> um, everyone is very cautious of you know what they bring in in my flat and if they bring garbage they have to take it yeah. back home. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's no uh, trash I'm left such a behind. nice friend. Like but can you shop these things at normal stores? Because when I go shop uh, you know meat, it's yeah. wrapped in everything's wrapped yeah. in and that's I, garbage. Yeah. Right? How do you dispose of that? I that's eat very little meat. Okay, uh, okay. and when I buy meat I buy it from like a, a slaughter. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Straight. and then I bring my my, my jar. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and and actually most of my vegetables is bought in kiwi. Kiwi. Yeah, I'm not paid really? to see that. No. Say that. That's that, like that's true. That is You're my. You're good uh, at uh, making so there's not plastic wrapped around. Yeah, anything. I just buy what whatever they have without yeah. wrapping in bulk. Uh, so candy, of course, is very easy to get uh, yeah. hold of. But uh, but you know during the winter it's a bit difficult because then there's a lot of onions and potatoes. Yeah. But people managed before. And okay. I kind of have a lot of fun, like, okay, I have like these three recipes, what can I make of it? And, uh, you know, for, for people that haven't heard about the concept before, it may sound insane. Mm. But I love it. <laughs> it's so much fun. So, it's and then kind of like a challenge. And it it's, it's is. Fun and, and then creative. I can like check old cookbooks and they're like, oh yeah, onions, you can, you know, you can boil it for like four hours and you make this great soup or yeah. you know you can make this uh, burger thingy just with onions or mm. like you know I, I think sometimes everyone is so busy so you just rush through your day yeah. you pick up something in the store you warm it up in the microwave and then like, like the food
food we buy, it's like nothing anymore. It's a yeah. bit sad. Yeah. And that's an important part of the zero waste movement to communicate that, that this is possible for everyone. Because yeah. a lot of people I know would say, Mm, not for me. Yeah. Uh, then I don't have the time or other excuses. You know? Yeah. And but um, you know, I was one of those people. It's very. Uh, how important. long have you lived like this? Yeah. Well, I started one and a half year ago to this extent, uh, and I started collect my waste one year ago, uh, <laughs> uh, just to show. Uh, at first, it was actually just a case because my friends and family were like, you are insane, <laughs> you're, you know, kind of falling off to the wrong side, so. But I was, I was like, no, there's something here, yeah. let me show you, it's actually possible. So it was just like a one month project. Uh, and then uh, I had so much fun, so I don't you know, take it even further. So, mm. so if you go into my flat at first, it will look very normal, but then you would kind of notice that my hygiene products, like my toothbrush and like, you know, uh, how everything is like my my uh, fridge and how everything is organized is mm. it's very I really like the aesthetics of that so that's yeah. that's uh, that's something but also it's really nice to have like good quality produce and mm. I don't know but no, so how do you do it with like uh, hygiene products and just like you know the products we buy in general because mm. they come in plastic containers yeah. and I mean you can't just go to the store and be like take the soap and like yeah. throw it out. I mean, well, you actually, if you go you to do? some of the, um, like, uh, kind of, uh, there, there is some shops, if you start to look around, you have uh -huh. Lush, for example. That's okay, yeah. So you can buy them in bulk, uh, but I actually make my soap, my laundry powder, and um, my tooth, tooth paste. Yeah. Tooth you make paste? laundry powder? Yeah, I, well, you know, I mix. I mix ingredients. Yeah. Uh, and it's all like, and I make my own, like, um, instead of plastic wrap, I have this, um, what's it called, like, um, from from the bees, the wax from the bees. Oh yeah, bee wax. Thing. Yeah, yeah in, in, I heard of that. And you kind of melt it into cotton. Yeah. And, and, like, I have, like, five ingredients, and I use that for everything, like, shoe, uh, shoe polish, you know, you can make everything. <laughs> from like so cool. It's kind of, uh, zero waste kind of make you this uh, environmental MacGyver. Yeah. 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 So it's kind of uh, going in, like, how can I solve this stuff? It can be super fun. You can go into it like, oh, I feel so guilty. Uh, that's that's wrong. Mm -hmm. That's not the right motivation. You should like go in and like, oh, like how can I make this fun? How mm -hmm. can I make this cool and you know enjoy it? And yeah, so that's really. It's not. It's not about like uh, what you can't have. It's kind of more figuring out all the new possibilities around you in a way too. Yeah. You're not confined into just buying was there in the store that's yeah. like already made for you. And I was fun. a big time consumer. Like I knew everything that was in the shops at all times. <laughs> so like my friends could call me like, oh, I need this sweater, this color. Yeah. You know, where, where do you <laughs> think I can, can get a hold of that? And uh, and it was so liberating. A year ago, my mom and, and me went to a shop and it was a beautiful shop with lots of beautiful clothes. But then she asked me, you know, if you want something, I can you know buy it for you. And I was like, actually, I don't need it. And it was so liberating. Like, why don't we, you know, go out and see a museum instead? Mm. Yeah. Like the old me, even though you know I would say it loud, like, <laughs> I would, I would really enjoy going shopping. I'm, yeah. And I'm not saying that you sh you should stop consuming at all, but like just like, we don't need as much as we believe yeah. that we do, and we kind of drown in, you know, stuff. Maybe you can break stuff. that down for us. Why, why is this important? Well. Oh, that's difficult to break down because it's a huge subject. Yeah. But um, I believe that our, our garbage is a is a, um, it's very polluting, mm -hmm. and and our garbage is kind of uh, a symptom of a lifestyle that is not healthy and not sustainable. So I think uh, it's different ways of attacking it. But mm -hmm. uh, for me, it's like waste is a, a, a great way to start because it's mm -hmm. very visible. So mm -hmm. yeah, like. Yeah. And we all have waste, right? So everyone can, we can do yeah. a little bit. Everyone can do a little can. bit and that's yeah. super awesome. Well, like one easy thing is to not things. use the mm. plastic bag when you go to the grocery store and instead yeah. have like a usable bag. Because I mean, imagine all those plastic bags every single day that go mm. comes in and out. Yeah. Well, it was great talking to you. Thank great you so much. Great talking to you guys too. I think you're doing too. an amazing thing here. And I, I love this. I think next year, you and I are going to come here and we're going to each have our own little jar. With mm. our jar <laughs> Let's start out with the bag, like <laughs> this maybe, but you can I'll get there. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, uh, we'll be back very soon, less than a minute again, so stay tuned.
Hi everyone, we're back live here at TEDx on Doll. Uh, we, now, we actually don't have a speaker, but we have a person here who is extremely important uh, at backstage to make the speakers actually feel comfortable talking, because I mean, TEDx is a, is a big deal. And public speaking is probably one of the things that people are the most scared of, but you can tell us more about that, because you're the expert, Oscar. You're a psychologist, right? Yeah. Yeah, and you work backstage here at TEDx on Doll. And what do you do backstage? Well, first of all, I make sure the uh, the speakers are taken care of and that they have uh, everything they need, uh, like food and mm -hmm. drink and and hairspray or <laughs> or whatever random thing that uh, comes up. Uh, and that's kind of my, my main job. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, of course, I'm also here because of my profession. So, uh, uh, in case uh, some people are extremely nervous or if there are um, two. Uh, uh, not nervous enough. Yeah. We, we try to uh, uh, find the, the optimal point yeah. uh, where they perform the, the best. Because it's actually bad to not be nervous too. You should be a yeah. little nervous. So, so for example, uh, most <coughs> accidents uh, happen when you're uh, not nervous at all. Really? Yeah. So a car accident yeah. is usually if you're not paying attention, right? Yeah. So that's, that's when the brain is uh, functioning the worst. And of course also if you are too nervous, your brain, you get um, what you call blackout or, yeah. yeah. So what's the best, like, uh, is there a way to define that best balance? Like, is there a feeling, like, can you try to describe it? Yeah, so, so usually it's not when you're terrified, yeah. but, but when you are, you can feel it in your body, you, um, typically you, you become a bit uh, uncomfortable, you have to move a bit, yeah. um, but you're not there that you're completely terrified. Yeah. Uh, um, and also, um, if you had had a flow feeling, yeah. uh, 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 that's also uh, typically mm. when you are at the optimal point where your brain is uh, performing the best. It's working. How, so how does it actually play out, being nervous and giving, what, what are the mechanisms, you know, do you know anything about that, the physical mechanisms? Why are we sharp when we're... Uh, a tiny bit nervous. Yeah, so it's uh, evolutionary. So uh, if you think in uh, in history, uh, what is the m uh, most uh, dangerous thing for for a person, like a caveman? Mm. It's other persons, oh. and especially if you're s you stick out. If mm. you if you you have the spotlight uh, on you, that, that's the yeah. could be the most dangerous uh, thing mm. uh, yeah. that happens. So historically, it has been uh, could be potentially uh, really dangerous, but. Uh, in modern time, it's not dangerous, but we have the, the, the genes. It's, yeah. in the, it's hardwired in our uh, genes. Because I mentioned before when we were talking that uh, like public <laughs> speaking for a lot of people is like the most scary thing yeah. ever. Like even more so maybe than things are actually like you could die from them, right? Oh yeah. That like because is that because we're right out or scared of being humiliated, or is it just like is it just like that? Bi biological thing in our body. Like, do you know any of the yeah, about that? Yeah, it's, it's uh, of course a combination. So, uh, humiliation could be uh, play a part, but it's the core of uh, uh, stems from from it was actually dangerous yeah. mm. before. So, uh, one example I, I tend to use, which is not about public speaking, is is uh, fear of spiders. Which mm -hmm. is uh, fear of public speaking is number one, and and fear of spiders is is uh, number two. And uh, uh, in, uh, on average, it's uh, uh, one every 10 years in the world, someone dies from a spider. Mm. <laughs> but coconuts, no one, are, there are no phobias uh, against coconuts, and that's uh, 100, uh, 100 years, <laughs> uh, 100 people each. each year. That dies from yeah, coconuts. Uh, yeah. But no one is ever scared of coconuts. No. That's, yeah. yeah. That so we're actually wired this way because of the dangers 10,000 years ago. Yeah, and maybe more. Maybe more. And so would you say that 50,000 years from now, we would be not nervous, none of us? Because this danger is not really relevant today, or is it oh. something else? It, 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 it doesn't disappear because it's not dangerous anymore. Oh. Uh, uh, it has to have a function. So, okay. yeah. It's more, yeah, okay. Yeah, so. And, and you're saying it's functional to be a little bit nervous, actually. Oh, yeah. So, so you, you perform better as a speaker. Uh, mm. If you uh, if you uh, are are somewhat nervous, mm. yeah. Well, thank you so much for yeah. telling us a little bit about like 
uh, be nervous, but also why it's <laughs> important for you to be in there. I mean, yeah. t tennis is a huge event, and we're lucky to have Tennis Arnold here and have all the amazing speakers. So, so your job is really important because, I mean, the, uh, the speakers are, I mean, what they are, have to say is that's all of TEDx, right? Yeah. Mm. If they can't communicate that, then we wouldn't have it. Mm. So thank you so much. Yeah. And we'll be back soon with live music, so be ready for that. We are. Yep. Hey everyone, we're back live here at the, uh, <laughs> TEDx Island. Uh, you're about to have a little mini concert right here at on Facebook. Uh, it is a local Grimsta band called The New Concept with Ellen and Christina. And they have with them actually one of our speakers, uh, Peter Stavre Nielsen. He's a Danish musician. And I know for a fact I'm in for a treat. So it has been great having you, or talking to you, I guess. And maybe we'll see each other soon. Maybe we won't. Have a good day. Bye. <laughs> Because you know I'm all about the bass, try to bass, no travel. I'm all about the bass, try to bass, no travel. I'm all about the bass, try to bass, no travel. I'm all about the bass, try to bass, 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 bass. I think it's pretty clear. I may no size two, but I could shake it, shake it like I'm supposed to do. I got that boom, boom that all the boys are chasing and all the right junk in all the right places. You see the magazines, they do that Photoshop. We know that shit ain't real. Go on and make it stop. If you got beauty, beauty, go raise it up. Cause every inch of you is perfect from the bottom to the top. Yeah, my mama, she told me, don't worry about your size. Ooh, ooh, ah, ooh. Cause boys like a little more booty to hold at night. You know I'm all about the bass, but a bass, no travel. I'm all about the bass, but a bass, no travel. I'm all about the bass, but a bass, no travel. I'm all about the bass, but a bass, bass, bass. I'm bringing booty. Please. 